Now we come to the most important type of lesions. Uh, we call that Bell's palsy. We will have a little bit discussion about that. Bell's palsy. In Bell's palsy, these days it is considered that Bell's palsy is due to some viral problems, especially herpes virus, herpes simplex virus. They believe someone who is suffering with herpes simplex virus and immune system when it build up a reaction against the virus, it reacts with the facial nerve component within the facial canal. When facial nerve component are inflamed within the facial canal, you know, facial canal is a tight fit over the nerve. It's a bony tight fit. It is an uncompromising fitting situation. So when facial nerve is inflamed, viral or post viral inflammation of facial nerve, facial nerve swell up within what? Facial canal. Right? As it keeps on swelling in a tight space, right, it compresses its own blood supply and it compresses its own substance. So that may lead to initially failure of nerve conduction function through this component. And if the process becomes more severe and prolonged, it may lead to degeneration. Again, listen, in mild to moderate lesions in Bell's palsy, which is viral or post viral swelling of the facial nerve within the facial canal and because facial canal is uncompromising bony tight fit over the facial nerve so when facial nerve swells within the facial canal it compromises its own function and its own blood supply initially it may be reversible problem especially when there is just a failure of conduction but if problem becomes severe and prolonged then many neurons or axons may degenerate is that right? Now, in this case, what really happens? In, in a severe case, how the patient will come clinically? Many patients come with pain just behind the ear, near stylomastoid foramen, right? Because that is one of the tight areas as well, right? Or some people have pain, proceed, pain proceeding for five days before the facial weakness starts. Now, after this pain, which is behind the ear, patient has multiple features related with failure of the facial nerve. For example, what really happens? Let's discuss one by one components of the facial nerve. First of all, brachiomotor fibers. When they are not working, do you think stapedius has a good supply control now? No. The stapedius muscle is not having control over it. Stapes will be loose fit or tight fit lose fit into oval window so it will hyper move or hyper move hyper move so what really happens that when there is facial nerve paralysis and branch to the stapedius is not working well stapedius muscle is not controlled so stapes oscillates unduly more to the ordinary sounds in the environment so ordinary sounds in the environment may become very, you can say, irritating to the patient, right? We call it hyperacusis. We call it hyperacusis. So one problem may be hyperacusis and which is due to loss of the control over the stapes due to failure of function of stapedius, right? And ossicular chains over vibrates in the middle ear. Secondly, the fibers which are going towards the face when they exit. Here we have already discussed the muscles which are supplied in the face, they fail to function. So patient failed to produce wrinkle on the forehead, fail to squeeze his eyes closed. Especially when he, such patient try to close his eyes, his eyeballs turn upward. This is called Bell's phenomenon. This is called Bell's phenomenon. A patient who try to, even you can do it with yourself. You hold your upper eyelid upward tightly and try to close the eye. What will happen? Eyeball will turn upward, right? So in facial nerve paralysis, because you could not understand it. Is it clear? Okay. Uh, in uh, what I'm talking about, that in facial nerve paralysis, when patient try to uh, close his eyes forcefully, the eye on which the orbicular ocula is unable to close the eye, that eye may eyeball may roll upward and outward that is called Bell's phenomenon. With that as I told you previously nasal, nasal labial folds are 
लास्ट इफ से लेटरल है सेकिंग ऑफ द फेस में भी सीन लोअर लेड में भी हैविंग सॉर्ट ऑफ एक्ट्रोपियन एंड देयर में भी सेकिंग ऑफ द फेस अलॉन्ग विद ड्रिबलिंग ऑफ स्लाइवा फ्रॉम द इफेक्टेड साइड ऑफ द एंगल ऑफ द माउथ एंड फूड में कलेक्ट ओवर हेयर पेशेंट इज अनएबल टू विसल और अनएबल टू शो इज टीथ राइट सो हेमी फेशियल मूवमेंट्स आर एंड टू ट्रबल दिस इज वन प्रॉब्लम वेन एवर फेशियल स्माइल्स द इफेक्टेड साइड एंगल ऑफ द माउथ इज इन अप्रोप्रिएटली पुल टू द हेल्दी साइड इज दैट क्लियर वेन यू स्माइल यू टेक बोथ एंगल आउटवर्ड जैगोमेटिक मेजर एंड माइनर स्टिल दे आर वर्किंग राइट नॉट रियली हैपन्स इफ दीज दिस इज पैराइज दीज जैगोमेटिक मेजर एंड माइनर दे विल पुल द फेस एंगल but they cannot pull the angle of mouth from this side so like that right then along with all these things if problem becomes severe do you think this taste fibers will be working or they will also lose their function so anterior two third of the tongue may lose its gastrointestinal sensations right and if in very severe case even you know what is this these fibers parasympathetic fibers which are going for salivatory function through the cauda tympani they are also degenerated or they lose lose their uh, axonal function and that may end up into partial dryness of the face uh, of the oral cavity i must say uh, because enough saliva is still produced by the parotid gland uh, which is connected to the aortic ganglion and fibers are coming from other root that is ninth nerve is that right so there may be some dryness dry, dry, drying of the face uh, sorry oral cavity there may be loss of anterior two third of the tongue ipsilateral ipsilateral half for the taste but touch pain temperature will be intact is that right you can put a potato here you may know potato is salty or not potato is hot or not but you don't know is it potato or not right because you cannot taste it but you can touch pain temperature is intact so we have talked about now this was bell's palsy in bell's palsy i told you post viral situation or viral situation what really happens to these patient most of the patient recover most of the patient in bell's palsy within few weeks they recover probably the swelling of the facial nerve was mild or moderate and it did not lead to significant uh, degeneration of a part of a nerve right usually if patient appears within first few days of bell's palsy most of the doctor prefer to treat the patient with steroids as an anti inflammatory drug usually prednisolone 50 mg daily orally for 5 days then for more 5 days 10 mg daily orally right the taper it off the purpose of this steroid treatment is that when you are giving prednisolone it is assumed that it will reduce the swelling of the nerve in the facial swelling of the nerve prednisolone will reduce the swelling of the nerve in the facial canal so mild or moderate swellings will not convert into severe swellings is that right with that until patient really recovers we have also to do certain other precautions for example as i told you patient is unable to shut his eyes so first the patient should cover his eye with dark glasses or there should be a pad applied over here eye pad or patient should be encouraged to repeatedly close his eye or at sleep he should apply some cream or some tape right and if problem is very severe and prolonged then we can do lateral tarso raffi in which lateral part of the uh you can say upper lid and lower lid are stitched together so that there should be minimum exposure chances is that right so we were talking about the management of patient with bell's palsy uh, someone was asking about will we do investigations or not the important point is here that there are so many other causes of facial nerve disturbance as well i will explain right now actually bell's palsy diagnosis put when all other causes are ruled out for example if there is hemifacial paralysis with herpes zoster then it is not bell it is ramsay hunt or if seventh and eighth are suffering together due to schwannoma again it is not bell or 
if there is a nuclear problem here with the pontine hemorrhage, even though facial nerve is suffering, but it is not Bell's. Bell's palsy is considered due to swelling of facial nerve within the facial canal leading to compromise of facial nerve function and this all should be due to viral or post viral phenomenon usually associated with herpes simplex usually it is associated with herpes simplex now how do you manage that i told you that we can do some investigations to rule out the other causes for example if you are really too much confused you can do a ct scan to look for Schwannoma, but usually it is not needed because history is very clear. Sudden onset of facial weakness, is that right? Without affecting the function of the eighth nerve, is that right? Or if you are thinking of Ramsey Hunt, just look in the ear. If there are no hemorrhagic lesions and vesicles, that is out. If you see six is working well, nuclear lesions are out. Of course, if opposite by uh, you can say there is no hemiplegia or hemiparesis, again pontine and supranuclear lesions are out. Is that right? Then again, if lesion is damaging the facial nerve in this particular area, lacrimation is lost along with other functions. But if lesion is distal to this area, then lacrimation is spared and other functions of facial nerve are lost. Is that right? So we were talking about patient uh, with bells palsy and its management. What I was talking, most of the patient recover on their own. But still, if patient present within few days of the, about 4-5 days of the onset of the symptom, we must try steroids, prednisolone. We give it about for 10 days and gradually taper it off. Right? Why? Because we are trying to reduce the inflammation of the nerve so that uh, nerve does not swell so much in the canal that it damages itself more. Number two, I told you that we are very much worried about exposure keratitis, over right? Because blinking phenomenon is lost, so patient may damage his uh, cornea due to overexposure to the environmental insults. To prevent that, dark glasses are recommended. With that, maybe at night before sleeping, patient can apply a tape, or patient should repeatedly patient should be encouraged to repeatedly close his eye manually, or. Uh, Another thing which we do that if there is over drying of this, if lacrimal failure also occur and there is drying of the eye, then the artificial tears we put, right? In most of the patient, about 85% of the patient, features will recover. But some 15% of the patient, probably there have been severe damage to the facial nerve and degeneration has been very severe and recovery is either not there at all or there is only partial recovery. There is no recovery or partial recovery. In those cases, after one year or so, we can attempt some plastic surgery to lift the patient's face of that side, affected side, or do some plastic surgery and modify the uh, tissue around the, uh, you can say in the upper lid and lower lid so that clear phenomenon should be easier and better. Is that clear? 